Cultures of Rejection aims to understand the conditions that encourage devaluation and debasement of others and the de-democratizing attitudes. An important factor in this regard are the physical and digital spaces in which social relationships take place today. So, let us look at how spaces of everyday lives, in our homes, in places where we socialize, and digital spaces facilitate cultures of rejection. Let's imagine a map of the spaces that everyday life traverses today. For the German workers that the researchers interviewed, this is roughly what it would look like. Daily routines are perceived as happening mainly between the workplace and their home and their neighborhoods. Conversations with colleagues at the workplace in break rooms, smokers' lounges, or group chats served as the main sites for interaction from coordinating shifts to venting about their work. Outside the workplace, however, spaces of collective sense-making are sparse. Inconvenient working hours in retail leave only little time and energy for civic engagement or cultural activities beyond the necessary daily chores. For others, a desire for flexibility and self-determination led to undertaking those leisure activities that they found time for alone. Digital environments form an exception, of course. Online, it is easier to interact and talk with others. But rather than delving headfirst into an ocean of personally tailored social media content, workers were much more skeptical. The publicity of social media platforms and an exhaustion with the pace of current events has made many wary of online environments and of news reporting in general. The half-private channels of messengers such as WhatsApp and Telegram appear much more relevant than the network publics of Facebook, Twitter, etc. Not necessarily because they are less frantic, but because they are perceived as unburdened by politics. In addition to group chats and private messenger services, another more traditional space is key to the everyday interpretation of experiences, grievances, or current events. One's own private home. At dinner with the family or on the couch with the spouse, people feel secure and protected to actually speak their minds. Looking out from within, society appears threatening. Anxieties about censorship, the feeling that you cannot talk to the people anymore, or a general atmosphere of hostility, justify the workers' retreat into these more private circles. In what appears as a beleaguered position, the researchers encounter elements of a walled subjectivity, closing itself off to the outside world, protecting what is seen as hours and forfeiting the desire to change or impact society in meaningful ways. Scarce resources in terms of time and in terms of emotional capacities justify this decision. The challenge, it seems, would be to create space for different, porous and open ways of relating to one to grow and thrive.